So the question is, um, how do you define your boundaries and your lines and stop people crossing them and get them to respect you? Is that right? Yeah. All right, give me some clarification about that. Fill me in. So, yeah, so how do you draw the line where someone will respect your time? And what, I guess, for example, is like showing up late to things or um, you feel like they don't value you, value you as much as you value them or where do you draw that boundary of like, okay, they're asking for too much when you first meet them or, you know, they're not respecting you as like, okay, my time is worth a lot more than that and like, I feel like you're asking for a lot from me. How do you draw that line? Especially for you, because like, I know you meet a lot of new people and people want stuff from you. Like, how do you know when to draw that line? I guess that's my clarifying question is like. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you in life is to sit down and work out exactly what is your hell no. Your hell no is never get broken. Know what they are and anything that isn't a hell no should be more towards a yes. So for example, I clearly define what I will be willing to do for absolutely anybody I meet, and I clearly define things that I won't do. So I'll give you an example. I will absolutely buy a round of drinks for anyone. I will not buy someone a drink to talk to them. This makes a very clear definition in whether I can or cannot buy somebody a drink. It means if I'm hanging out with somebody and we're having a great conversation, then I don't mind saying, hey, I'll get us a round of drinks, with the assumption being the next round of drinks is on them. What I won't do is go up to a stranger in the bar and be like, can I buy you a drink? Because that would break my rule. I know clearly and definitively what all my hell knows are, the things I just absolutely will not do. By knowing that, it means it's really hard for people to take advantage of me. If I am in a bar and I talk to someone and they say to me, so, uh, you're gonna buy me a drink? My answer would be, no. Exactly, <laughs> because it's one of my hell knows. Because I know what it is, I already know that this person is gonna filter themselves out of my life. <clears throat> one of the big things that I do that other people don't do is when I hang out with somebody before we start dating, before there is any kind of chemistry, I define to people who I am and what my hell knows are. But I do it in the third person. So I'll have a discussion, I'll be like, hey, uh, you know, as we're getting to know each other, we've found some common ground, we're having a good conversation, we're laughing, and I'll be like, what's the worst relationship you've ever been in? And we'll have a discussion about their worst relationship. Obviously, they'll typically follow that question with, what's the worst relationship you've ever been in? And then I'll say something like, ah, it's someone who doesn't respect my boundaries. Mm. Which will prompt the question, what are your boundaries? Bingo. <laughs> and then I will outline, because they asked, exactly what my hell knows are. And I'll say to them, outside of this, I'm pretty much down for anything, which is also a really important phrase, because then they'll test the what does anything mean. But I've already worked out what my hell knows are. So it will not be broken by the anything. So they'll say to me, so wait, you're telling me you'd be down to uh, jump on a plane, go to some random crazy country and have an orgy with strangers. And I'm like, well, it's not a hell no, so I'm open to the discussion. Doesn't mean I'm gonna do it, but I'm totally open to a discussion about it. And by knowing the boundaries, by knowing where they are, it makes it really hard for people to break it. So I'll give you an example. Um, I don't mind people being late. Late is okay. Flaking, not okay. You can turn up late to a date with me and I'm gonna forgive you. I'll sit on my phone, I'll do some work that I was supposed to do, I'm fine. If it turns into you're not gonna turn up or you're gonna turn up so late that we can't do it, you just breach the hell no. Mm. And I'll say to people, if you're gonna cancel, my time's really valuable. You gotta give me 24 hours heads up. Last minute heads up is still okay, providing it's a big deal. But if you don't turn up, you just don't show and you don't say anything, we're done, that is it. And I'll get to tell them that about my worst relationship ever. I'll be like, it was somebody that absolutely disrespected me and we'd been dating for a few months and then they just decided it was okay to flake and they didn't need to tell me because they forgot. That was it. I can't be forgotten, we're in a relationship, even if it was the early days. So by defining it at the beginning and giving a story of a time somebody actually broke it, it lets them know what is and isn't acceptable in my world. And then all I do is I follow my world completely. I broke a soft boundary recently. It's not a hard boundary, but it's a soft boundary. And I wanna show you how that boundary got broken, and it was with my actual girlfriend. So someone who we both know. Uh, what happened was, I have a rule, and my rule is, I don't share food. It's a pretty strict rule, I don't share food. 
it was almost a hard no. I won't say it was a definitive no, but it was up there with hard no's. And it, it solved a lot of problems. Like, you know when you go on a date with somebody and you don't know what dessert to order, so you just order one dessert, and then your partner says they don't want one, and then they try and get half of yours. And my rule was simple. If you think you want a mouthful of this, we'll order two, you'll have a mouthful of yours and I'll finish yours. And I really love my partner. We've been together a very long time. And she started getting through the barrier of I don't share food. And, and she's pretty respectful for it. She asks for each bite. So she's like, can I have one bite? And I was like, oh, I love you enough to give you one bite. And then she'll kind of respect it and won't push. So it's OK. So we ended up in a world where it was OK for her to ask for a bite. And this turned into your food tastes better. Can we share it? <laughs> and that became very simple. I changed it to, OK, I will always order myself two of what I want, which was very easy. So I'd order myself two, start eating one, not let her know there was another one. She'd be like, can I have it? And I'd be sure, give it to her, and I'd just start eating the second one. Right? And, that, and that was a good solution. And we're going back like two years. That was like happened. Somehow this translated into anything we eat, she made the decision on what we ate. And it, it started very simply. And it got to, I would only order food that I felt that she would want to eat because I knew she was going to steal my food. Over the last couple of days, this ended up with me ordering food I don't like. <laughs> and we sat down at two meals. It was exactly two meals where I didn't like either meal. And I just didn't eat my food. And I didn't really complain about it because I didn't really want to eat that much anyway. And then I realized that what happened was I had allowed myself to slide into a world where my partner chooses what I eat. And that is a hell no. That is a clear hell no. But it happened by accident. It was largely my fault. It was totally partly hers, but it was largely mine because I shouldn't have allowed it to happen. And this is important. I take responsibility for my own relationship. This is why I'm not breaking up with her. If it was purely her fault, we'd be done. Like, we were over. But it was me. I allowed it to happen because I love her so much, and I let the slide happen. So because it's my fault, and she's not being like, no, you have to eat exactly what I say, right? If that had happened, we'd be done. But she didn't. And so instead, I looked at her today, today, and said, I have to stop ordering food that you like. I love you, but I've got to stop. I am now only going to order food I like, and I'm not going to share it. If you want that food, you're going to have to order yourself something. Maybe I might voluntarily give you something if you look at it in the right way and don't <laughs> upset me. But I have to put this clear definition in because it is a hell no. And it's a weird hell no, and I know that. <laughs> but it is a hell no. And because it's a hell no, I have to respect it and get back into ordering what I want. And this is so fascinating to me because I've been doing dating for 13 years, and it's very hard for anybody to breach one of my hell no's to, to get around it. But my partner had found a way in a completely innocent, loving, well-intentioned way. But I understand relationships to the point that I have to retake this because it will turn into resentment. Yeah. Well, that's, that's kind of my question because like, I'm, I'm good at having the boundary, but then something like that happens where like, you kind of want to slip a little bit and then it's like, oh, well, I like this person a lot or like they're my friend and it's like, okay, it's just a little bit, it's not bad. How do you get to the point where like then you're like, okay, I can't let this keep going because sometimes you let it go and then it goes too far and then it's like... Resentment. Uh, yeah, you become resentful and then you're like, if you try and pull it away, it's like you're pulling the rug out almost and it's like, they're like, what the hell have you been doing this for a year now? And like, I thought it was fine. I pull them to one side and do exactly what I did. I literally said to my girlfriend today, I was like, I love you, I have to stop doing this. And I was like, and it's because I love you, I've got to stop because I'm starting to get annoyed by it. Mm -hmm. And the annoyance will turn into resentment. And I'll say, to, I, you know, I said to her, I was like, look, it, it slid and it was cool and, I'm, and I don't hold this against you in any way. But I have to stop for me like this. And, and it's even to the point of like, I was allowing meals to slip. Like if she wasn't ready to eat, I was waiting until she's ready, which was making me get angry because I was getting hungry. And so to the point that like this morning, I said to her, I'm going to breakfast at this time. This is when I'm going. Would you like to come? If not, I'm going. It was very clear cut. And it will be a little bit harsh and weird for a while because I've got to bring back my boundaries. And like, so, you know, this is kind of me telling her because she's in the audience. Hey, just so you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit strict for a while. <laughs> you like, are sharing though. Okay. Not sharing. <laughs> so, so I love that she tries it, right? That's what they do. They try it. I'm like, no, this is not happening. I'm not sharing. But you have to be, you have to be clear cut. You've got to say, hey, this is what the boundaries are. This is the rule. And it's because I love you that the boundary has to exist, yeah. right? And that's so important. But what happened was, so this morning we went, we got breakfast. 
I ended up eating before she did. I sat down, I ate my entire meal, and then I sat and watched her eat her meal, and I was fine with it. I was much happier with that. I enjoyed that situation better than the one where I waited for her, and then I was angry and hungry and not focused on her at all because I was just trying to scarf my food down. So once you know someone's breaking a boundary, once you know it's there, even if it was your fault, even if it just slipped in an insidious way, just put them to one side and be like, hey, listen, i got to tell you something. For the last year, I've been allowing this situation, but I've got to be real with you, it upsets me every time. And it's my fault, my bad, I don't blame you. I've let it happen, but it's got to stop. And, and that's for me, I've got to stop it. So, and then you've got to give them a solution. You've got to be like, if you want this, this is the solution. So like, for my girlfriend, if you want to eat my food, I will order two. But it's going to be my choice, not yours. <laughs> but it's going to be what I want. And if you don't like the second one, then just tell me and I won't order the second one or don't share, right? Or when we get food, it's got to be, I'm ordering what I want, not what you want to taste. So you're, they are going to push back and you've got to draw that line. And you've got to remember this is a hell no. We know that down the line what ends up is an unhappy relationship or an unhappy friendship. So you've got to bring it to today and be like, I do not want to reach that goal. So this is the line. And if they are unwilling to do that, you know that you're going to reach the end goal anyway at the end. Might as well end it now. Why wait? Just, no, we're done. If you can't respect the fact that this is something I need, we're done. And make it very clear. Yeah. It scares me when it's like a relationship that's a lot longer because I'm like, well, what if that becomes a crossing point where it's like either we're going here or here and it's like... If it's a crossing point, it will always be a crossing point. Yeah. And if it's going to reach that way, are you going to bend or are you going to get them to respect what is a clear boundary for you? Mm. Would they do the same? If you cross one of their boundaries, would they be okay with it? Probably not. And that's the point. So you have to build it up and say, this is the boundary. This is where it is. I promise you, if you do that, you may lose some friendships on the way or some relationships, but the ones you end up in will be that much better because they respect you and you'll respect them. Well, I guess it's hard because I feel like I let them, or I let it slip into letting it happen. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm letting it happen. So then so you're I feel wrong going back and be like, oh, we can't do that, but I just let you do it this whole time. Right, but now your responsibility is to fix the thing that you let slip. That is the punishment for letting it slip, is you've got to have that awkward conversation and fix it. And come to it from a positive place. Be like, hey, listen, I made a mistake. I've got to bring it up to you. It's my fault, but something's happened, and it's starting to upset me, and so I've got to bring it up. And let them know. You're empowering them to make the decision. For all you know, they're going to be like, wow, I totally didn't realize. Okay, cool, I've got that. Remember to add the resolution to it. Be like, if you want that, this is how you can still get it. Or this is a way that it can work. So like, you know, I'm not saying I'm never going to share food with her. What I'm saying is I'm either going to offer the food that I want to share or I'm going to, if she wants something and she thinks she might like it, I'm more than happy to order two and I'll take a bite of the first one and then give it to her, right? But what I'm not willing to do is eat less and be unfulfilled and be angry about it. What I'm not willing to do is order food I don't want so she can taste two meals that she really wants to try and I'm left with food I can't eat. Right? That's what I don't want. And she doesn't want that either. I saw it in her face last night when she saw how unhappy I was over the meal. She's like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Do you want to order more food? And it was like, I don't want to order three dishes for us when we can just order two. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool.